Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and the anticipation, you can feel it, of the rate cut. This has to be the most closely watched Fed meeting in years. We know that we are going to get into a position where the Fed is actually starting this lower rate cycle. Um, how much does it matter what they decide today in terms of whether it's 25 basis points or 50? As you say, I think the decision is, is very, um, very close. So it's, you know, markets are priced a little, a little over 50% chance of a 50 base rate cut uh, this week. Our base case is that the Fed delivers 25 basis point cut uh, this week. We think the combination of an economy that maintains decent momentum and also the Fed preserving some optionality in case you know, the economic performance uh, diverges in, 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 the, in the coming months. We think there's a strong rationale for them delivering 25 bips, although we do understand why there are others that think that 50 bips is the right option. If you look at the combination of where real policy rates are, and the clear slowing we've seen in the labor market over recent months. This is gonna, this, this could majorly juice all markets, not just crypto, but there are others that say that it's gonna be 75. We shall see. Check this out, this is interesting. This is about the silver price market manipulation by JP Morgan and the boys. There are eight banks right now, eight Western banks, commercial banks, that hold the largest concentrated short position of any commodity ever traded in the history of the COMEX market, ever, in silver. This little mm. tiny itty bitty market, you have eight of the most powerful Western banks in the world stepping on it so that it will not go up. There's been traders who have been convicted, I believe, of manipulating the silver market in the past. Um, I can't remember which The which head banks. trader of JP Morgan, Michael Nowak, and a couple others, and yet they're still allowed to be the custodian of the world's largest silver trust, SLV. And if you don't have cheap silver, you can't do that. And what's happening right now, for the first time in my career, <coughs> is that you have countries like India and China, who are now motivated, sophisticated, coordinated, wealthy, and cunning. And they are draining the exchanges using our stupidity where you can see a $920 million fine by the Justice Department to J.P. Morgan for manipulating the silver market, the largest fine they've ever handed out, ever, and yet their head trader, Michael Nowak, who I've met before, is in prison right now for, for doing this, and yet they're still allowed to be the, the custodian of the world's largest silver trust, along with BlackRock. And J.P. Morgan is also part custodian of GLD, there are I mean, there, we live in a world of pure manipulation from all angles. Now, I thought this was a, um, a really good, a, an interesting explanation of what this guy thinks a, a market crash would look like for crypto. He's talking in terms of Bitcoin, but when, he, when these Bitcoin maxis say Bitcoin, just think crypto, XRP, Bitcoin, all of it. And what I'm expecting is a is a crash. I'm expecting a massive crash and I'm expecting a really, really bad crash. But it's a much different crash than most people expect. You see, a crash, if you think about a crash, what's everybody afraid of? A recession, a market crash. What does that mean? Well, if things crash, let's say what most people think, my, my retirement portfolio drops, my real estate, my home drops, my, I lose my job, I get a lower paying job, my business doesn't do as well, I, I don't make as much money. That, that's what most people think of. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean? What all that means is that the quality of my life would go down. The standard of my living goes down. I don't have as much money. So I have to now eat a hamburger meat instead of steak. So really what they're saying is a crash means my standard of living goes down. But you see, prices don't have to drop for that to happen. Prices could go up so fast that my pay doesn't keep up and my standard of living also goes down. So it's a reverse mm -hmm. crash. And while everybody's expecting a deflationary crash, I'm expecting an inflationary crash. Now, the results are the same. We both have a standard of living that's been reduced. However, I think a reverse crash, an inflationary crash is actually much worse. 
And the reason why it's much worse is because on a deflationary crash, at least the markets reset and people mm. get a chance to get back in. Right. My yeah. kids could eventually buy a house. But in an inflationary crash, you never get another chance. It's just too late. And so yeah. I think that's where we're going um, now. Will there be crashes? I mean, what is your definition of that? Of course, there's going to be massive volatility along the way. Uh, but I don't expect any long sustained depression. You know, maybe we see some sort of flash crashes, sort of like we saw in 2020 that probably last half the time, something like that. Not tradable events uh, because it's going to be volatile along the way. I mean, if you look at the chart of the Weimar inflation, hyperinflation, and you've, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen it, right, with the red lines overlaid, the volatility was insane. And so we'll have yeah. that, uh, but I'm expecting the crash up. Crash up. Is that what he just said? Uh, check this out. This is a Bitcoin maxi. I always like, I always, th these kind of tweets I love because these people hate XRP. So when they say something about XRP, it's a big deal to me. I bought a lot of XRP today. Never in a million years w would I have thought this would be the case, but the chart never lies. Working on an XRP TA video now. Also, this is so-and-so's fault since he wouldn't stop waffling to me about it. Now, I want to point something out today because I think that it's important that we point it out. Today, Coindesk put this out. The crypto industry's least favorite U.S. lawmaker, Senator Warren, has a Republican opponent, opponent in the November election, John Deaton, who carries heavy crypto credentials, and he thinks he has a, a shot at beating her. Well, there's some, an elephant in the room that I think it's time it's pointed out, okay? Because there's all these pro-crypto and people that are just like conservative media people who can't stand Senator Warren, who, who haven't even had John Deaton on. And it could boost his campaign huge. And you have to wonder who these people really are. You really do. So here we have the most important race in crypto besides the presidential election, and there are still tons of crypto pundits, some billionaires, who haven't shown any support for John Deaton. Senator Loomis, in, she's like supposedly the crypto senator. She endorsed that Chuck Kane, guy, the, the Ian Kane guy, against John Deaton in the primary, and John Deaton beat him. But now, she hasn't given any support to John Deaton, expressed any support at all for John Deaton, and now he's running against Senator Warren. And so I want to know what's the what is what, what's going on. Senator Warren is the Senator Warren is the tip of the spear as far as trying to hurt crypto. She is Operation Choke Point 2.0. She's the one that's been running it. Where are these people? Where is, uh, where's Joe Rogan? Where's Patrick Bet David? Where's Glenn Beck, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, Ben Shapiro, Laura Ingram? All of these people can't stand Elizabeth Warren. Where are they? What about some of the crypto people? Where's Michael Saylor? These are, these are crypto people. Senator Warren literally got Jamie Dimon on CNBC. They, he was talking about how you should just ban it all. And Senator Warren was the one that was giving him the layup so that he could say that. She hates Bitcoin too. Where's Michael Saylor? Where's Chris Larson? I'll ask it. Where's Chris Larson supporting John Deaton? Where's Joseph Lubins? Where is Eric Voorhees, Roger Veer, Kim.com is a good guy. No, he can't stand Senator Warren. These guys are loaded. Where are they? Brad Garlinghouse did donate through Ripple. His buddy Arrington, where is he? Why can't he donate to John Deaton? Where's Jed McCaleb, Barry Silbert? The Winklevosses have donated. Where's uh, these big time VC guys? Where's Alex Jones, Lex Frid Fridman? Where's Megyn Kelly? Jamie Vernon is the is the producer for um, Joe Rogan. Where's he? Where's Greg, Greg Gutfeld? Where are the people who would love to see Senator Warren gone? I don't understand it. I don't get it. Doesn't make any sense to me. Speaking of things that don't make any sense, last night I watched the Trump, Donald Trump's uh, world liberty thing, and I don't get it. World, world liberty 
plans to sell government. I don't get how they think that now's a good time to do it because all of us out here don't have any clarity. How can they create some token right in the middle of all of this? I mean, I don't know anybody who's out there in the United States that's trying to create a token right now. How can these guys do it? 63% will be sold to the public. I mean, what? I don't get it. But here's, this was Donald Trump. I, I mean, I get that he's pro-crypto and, and his sons are pro-crypto and I think that's great. I just don't get this. So why is it not right now? Well, I think it will be right now. Right now you have a very hostile SEC. The, uh, I guess you'd have to say, I don't know, when you say administration, do you call it Biden or do you call it Harris? Nobody really knows what to call it, but maybe we'll say a combination <coughs> of both, but they've been very hostile toward crypto, toward all of it and extremely hostile, like nobody can believe. Nobody even understands why. My attitude is different. Uh, if we don't do it, China's gonna do it. China's doing it anyway. They are. But if we don't do it, we're not gonna be the biggest and we have to be the biggest and the best. And you know, when you look at values, and when you add it all up, the, this, the value of this whole thing is bigger than, they were showing me the top 20 corporations and all of this, the, the numbers are just mm -hmm. gigantic. Uh, it suffers from some credibility lapses. I mean, some things were were done or not done, but uh, it's a growing, it's very young and very growing. And if we don't do it, China is going to do it. If we don't do it, other countries are going to do it. A lot, a lot of countries would like to be in a position. We have the advantage because it's us. But you have a big advantage because it's me, because I, I do believe in it. I also know a lot of friends that are really into it. And my my... Kids, I mean, Barron knows so much about this. Right. Eric, and he's, Barron's a young guy, but mm -hmm. he knows it. He talks about his wallet. He's got four wallets or something. And I'm saying, what is a wallet? <laughs> Explain this to me. But uh, he knows this stuff inside out. And Eric and Don know it so well. They do. It's almost like younger people know it a lot better than older people. But I have a lot of respect for them. They've shown, they've shown great judgment, all of them. And uh, I think, uh, I think, you're onto something. You're onto it a lot sooner than most people. You know, you really, it, it's sort of like it's a fledgling business and yet it's a massive business, but it has a chance to really be something special. And when I do things, I, I notice a lot of crypto comes in. People pay with crypto. Oh, yeah. And you didn't see that even a year ago, two years ago. So I, I think it's really, it's, it's big and yet it's a fledgling compared to what it will be. And Okay, now, um, here's Eleanor Terrett, Scoop, full, full five-member SEC commission is preparing to testify in front of the financial committee next Tuesday. This will be the first time the whole commission, not just the chair, has testified since 2019. Gensler himself will test, testify alone in front of the Senate the day after on Wednesday. All, it's not just Gary Gensler that has a lot to answer for, it's these people too because most of them have helped him to keep this all going. Now, Hedera, is, uh, Hedera has joined forces with Ripple and Aptos Foundation in this MICA Crypto Alliance. This should be interesting to watch. You can check it out at MICA Crypto Alliance. Here, we'll see what their, what is their thing. Uh, it's a collaborative initiative to establish by the DLT Science Foundation designed to streamline and enhance compliance with the markets and crypto assets. Now, folks, most of what I talk about on this channel is XRP. And the reason, the, the big reason right now that that is, is because XRP is the only digital asset with legal clarity. And, but, but in terms of me investing, uh, the only digital assets that I would ever have any interest in personally are the ones that are that that seem to be working on being compliant. That's why I don't invest in all these random meme coins and all this stuff because some of them are a joke and there's nobody that's trying to work on any kind of compliance. I'm not going there, not with my money. That's just my stance. Now, David Schwartz is going to be hosting a space uh, next Wednesday to discuss programmability on the XRP ledger, including how my thinking was, has evolved on this topic and inviting this guy who is senior software engineer from Ripple X to share feedback. She's collecting, not guy, let's see, 
That's a girl. Okay. Um, and then um, what folks would like to see with the programmability proposal. Okay. Now, folks, let me tell you what. In DAIXRP.com, let me tell you, let me tell you what's about to happen. I'm not going to show you the smoking gun. And I'm not talking about one of the attempts on X47. I'm going to show you the smoking bazooka that shows you that both, both of these things are tied together, which can only mean one thing. This is a smoking freaking bazooka. And I'm going to show it to you. And here we go. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family this is about to get interesting.